Akron Athletics and the Wentz Financial Group present Zips Weekly with John Gross. Contributing sponsors, Hilton, Akron Fairlawn, Bryant, Heating and Cooling, and Regency Office Furniture. And now your host, Joe Dunn. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the weekly edition of Zips Weekly, Coach. We're ready to talk some basketball with you again with just six games left in the regular season. Akron right now with a record of 17 and 8, 9 and 3 in the Mid-American Conference. Two more games this week up at Eastern Michigan on Tuesday and back with Buffalo on Saturday night at Rhodes Arena. Coach, I know you've built your program on defense to give up 90 points and 84 points. That's that's not like the Zips this past week. What made you think we'd talk about that on today's show? <laughs> I knew that because I had a long talk with you after the game uh, down in Athens, and I knew that was foremost yeah, I mean, on your mind. Yeah, we've lost our way a little bit in terms yeah. of who we are as a program. Obviously, we've won defending and then continuing to play very intelligent offense. And quite frankly, our offense right now from an efficiency standpoint, Joe, over the last 10 games is as good as it's been during the six years. Yeah. Um, I, I really feel comfortable with that. I feel good. I think we're trending in the right way there and have just continued to get better on that end as each game has went by. You know, unfortunately, in four of the last six, five of the last seven games, we haven't defended yeah. up to our standards. Too many mistakes, not enough focus at that end of the floor, and we've tried to outscore people. And in a few cases, in terms of results, you wanting yeah. to win, it, it worked, so to speak. Um, in society's eyes, not necessarily in my eyes, um, as we've continued to dress it now for a couple weeks. But, you know, like I said after the game, I mean, some people learn by listening, seeing, doing, and other people learn by peeing on the electric fence. Yeah. <laughs> and so if that's what it takes to get us to understand that we've got to play better on that end of the floor in order to get to where we want to go as a team this year to truly overachieve and cap out and reach this team's potential – We've got to defend a lot better than we have the last three weeks. Coach, looking at last season and then this season, a lot of similarities. At about this time last year, we had lost a couple games in a row. Then we just took off and finished very strong, of course, winning up in Cleveland. you see any similarities to this or not? You know, it's a totally different journey, yeah. Joe. For one thing, our chemistry is really good. We've got yeah. great captains, great leaders. We've got really guys that are great teammates. We've got really good chemistry both on and off the court. I don't have any concerns there. I really don't. And then offensively, we're way better than we were at this time last yeah. year. It's not even close. But defensively, we've taken a step back. I mean, we have the last statistically. And then, I, you know, I think our focus, our mindset, um, you know, our desire uh, to make that our number one priority on uh, that end of the floor uh, during the game has got to be a lot better. Exactly. Well, let's uh, take a look at the highlights from these past two games beginning Tuesday night as the Toledo Rockets come to town. And, Coach, we talked about them last week. Offensively and as far as talent, they may be as good as it gets in the league. Yeah, no question. And the kid Maddox, who you see there dribbling and ironically turning it over, he didn't make too many mistakes that night, was absolutely terrific. Added to their veteran guys who we've competed against for years as they're an older team with four starters returning from last year's MAC regular season championship team, and then the number one offense in the league, top 15 in the country, highest rated offense we've defended in league games in my six years. So, you know, give them credit. Obviously, they're really good on that end of the floor. I'm more concerned about us being able to do what we're supposed to do defensively within our system to try to deter them from scoring, and we're just not doing that enough. But you're going to see we're making several plays here on offense. Our shot making, Hankerson's really started to make shots. Yeah. Greg has really done a nice job creating uh, a lot of assist for us, assisted field goals in particular over the last three weeks. I think Greg Tribble's been terrific on offense with that, playmaking for us, uh, playing inside out. Freeman's double doubles. You know, Castaneda's efficient scoring. You know, we've had a lot of really good things cooking on offense. Unfortunately, if you don't guard, uh, especially on the road, like you saw Friday night in Athens, and you're going to be in trouble. You can't out offense people and count on that as your strictly your recipe for winning. You might get away with it every once in a while, but yeah. you know not consistently. We saw the score, coach. We were down 19 to 18, only a point down, and that's amazing because I think we started the game like one for 14 from the field, and be down only one. That, that says a lot. Yeah, about no, our offense was a juggernaut after that one for 14 start, as you see in a lot of these clips here, and. 
ironically, we, we just, you're right, Joe, we, we started one for 15, and the most impactful our defense was during the game was the early part of the game. Had we made any shots, maybe we could have got a little bit of distance. You see us coming from behind here, down 11, late in the half, and Hank lays it in with the lefty. Now it's nine. So we, I thought we were playing from behind the bulk of the game. I thought the start of the game, you mentioned it, we didn't make shots and take advantage of the fact that that was the only segment of the game where we were really getting stops. And then we finished the half very poorly. And we're a program that takes a lot of pride in how we start and finish halves. And I thought the Toledo game was won for Toledo at the start of the game and at the finish yeah. of the first half, basically in the first half. From that point on, we were, we were struggling to just kind of fighting our way and fight and scratch and claw, and we cut it to two possessions. We cu eventually cut it to one possession, yeah. as you know. Three-point game with two minutes to go, but, you know, we just kept trying to play from behind the entire game, really due to the bad start uh, first half and the bad finish first half. Trenton Hankerson, I think, had two big three-pointers to open up the second half, Coach, and right back in it. No, he's shooting it really well, starting to get more <laughs> and more comfortable. Very typical of a transfer in the uh, second semester or the back half of the season. And, and uh, he's, uh, he's doing a great job for us on that end of the floor. Well, you stay close. And then you come in with a big 7-0 run, Coach, to really get back in it. Momentum has shifted. You're back in it late in the game. Yeah, no, we got, got good character guys. I mean, these guys, like the other night in Athens, were down by 18, and we end up losing the game by yeah. 9 and go plus 9 on them in the last four or five minutes of the game. We, you know, we, we, we play till zeros. I mean, that's a saying in our program, and that's an expectation. Uh, we did that in both these games this past week. You know, unfortunately, we shot ourselves in the foot uh, a little bit defensively with too many mistakes in both games and weren't able to be forceful and impactful on that end uh, really consistently at all uh, in either of the two losses. I thought the Rockets made some big shots a couple times with the shot clock running down, Coach. They made some tough shots and yeah. really break momentum. Especially Maddox, yes. we talked about earlier. I mean, obviously, we all know about Milner and Shoemate and Ray J. Dennis and Moss. And those guys are four starters and have a lot of games under their belt uh, from last year's MAC championship regular season team. But, um, you know, obviously, Maddox was a great addition for them. And you're right, Joe. I thought a couple times, in particular, late in the game. Yeah a couple of his big shots at the end of the shot clock that were heavily challenged You're right. really influenced the outcome. Zip's got uh, in foul trouble. I think Hankerson played with four and uh, Enrique played with four. So it was tough coming back with some of your best guys sitting and watching. Yeah, it was. No question about it. Um, part of the defensive um, you know, improvement that we have to make is we've got to be able to play hard and physical without yeah. fouling. That's always been a real M.O. for us. Yeah. We've taken a lot of pride in that. We've been one of the nation's best teams in defending without fouling when you look at the national rankings in that area. But, the, again, the last three weeks, and in particular this last week against Toledo and against Ohio, we yeah. weren't very good at all in that area, and that's got to improve. Zips lose that one, 84-74. We're going to take a break, come back, and look at highlights from that big game Friday night down in Athens. So don't go away. We're back right after this. The difference with Wentz Financial Group is that we do not have a cookie cutter answer to any of our clients' needs. Every day is completely different in the market and every client situation is unique. We value the opportunity and responsibility to manage the hopes and dreams of our 3,000 customers nationwide. Come see the difference Wentz Financial Group can make for your financial future. Wentz Financial Group, investment management for your lifetime. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. Okay, welcome back to Zips Weekly, brought to you each week by Bud Wentz and the Wentz Financial Group. And, of course, our highlights each week brought to you by Regency Office Furniture. And, Coach, we're going to go back to Athens this past Friday night. Always a good atmosphere down at the Convo. Always a great atmosphere. Uh, unfortunately, we, our defense didn't show up, so the highlight of the trip for me was getting a chance to see some, a lot of good, great friends and people that we have relationships with from our time down there. It certainly wasn't... Uh, watching our defense, unfortunately. Um, 
Offensively, you see a lot of the clips he were, here. We were really good again. Um, Reek double-double. Castaneda career high. Shot over 50% from the field, over 50% from three. Didn't shoot it particularly well, Joe, no. from the free throw line. That probably cost us a little bit. But you see here we're out running, sharing the ball. I uh, thought we made good decisions for the most part. Took good shots. We were really efficient offensively. You see high-low action. You know, so we, we, we continued to cook with grease on offense. We've just got to get this defense uh, in order if we expect to have any type of, you know, success here down the stretch. Xavier Castanet, of course, uh, as always, a couple early three-pointers were tied at eight. And as you mentioned, Coach, doing some good things offensively early. We think our first lead, I think it was 15 to 14, had a great dunk by Greg Tribble. I mean, that's a highlight reel on that dunk. Yeah, great two-on-one, yeah. primary break, fast break. Uh, Hank, it's in fact, the clip's right here. Hank to Greg uh, for the dunk in the M1. Yeah. And I, I thought Nate Johnson, he was terrific during the game. I mean, he was the one guy when I watched the game at both ends, O-N-D, that I was really pleased with. Um, I thought he really played well um, and did a really good job. And I thought that was the silver lining a little bit in the, uh, in the loss in, in, in Athens. I think we had our last lead in the first half, Coach. I think it was 26 to 24. We're up two. And then Nate Johnson's going to hit a big three-pointer from the deep right corner. And we're down, I think, 39-34 at the half. Yeah, no, it was a, it was a close game, really, yeah. the entire first half. There you see Nate in the gap. Uh, with getting a jump ball strip. Uh, I, I just thought we were really, you know, defensively is where we made too many mistakes or we should have been ahead at halftime. That and our free throw shooting. Yeah. And then in the second half, there were a couple of momentum changing plays that, that occurred that were outside of our control. And then we tried to fight through those a little bit and give our guys credit. I mean, it was 18 after a couple of those momentum changing plays that were outside of our control. And uh, we ended up cutting it to nine at the end of the game and really fought and uh, played till zeros all the way through. One thing I noticed, Coach, Friday night, uh, after only a short, I think, two-day, three-day rest to get ready after uh, the game on Tuesday night, you were really substituting liberally, keeping guys fresh, in and out, trying to keep them fresh. Trying too early, and quite frankly, I, I would like to play eight, nine guys, yeah. double-digit minutes. Um, but what, some guys got to earn that. You know, it's not uh, – I tell them all the time, unfortunately, playing time's not like Halloween. Everybody doesn't get candy. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, the way, that's the way it works. Like, you, you, you've got to produce, you know. And it's a great lesson for players, Joe. A lot of these guys think, oh, if you play me more, I'll play better. Well, that's not the way it works. Yeah. Show me in practice. You know, the, uh, when you're in the game, do what we ask you to do. Earn the right to play more. It's not the other way around. And uh, I think a lot of players get that reverse uh, psychology going, and they don't, especially young guys. Yeah. And they don't get it. Uh, but we, I like being able to play more guys and then give these guys more blows because at the end of the day, you're right, we did that in the first half. But still, you know, those guys, we had four guys play 30, 34-plus minutes in the game. You know, that's a lot, a um, lot for those guys. So, and I thought our effort was good. Again, it was just defensive mistakes. I mean, blown coverages and ball screens, post-defense, off of shooters, our, our, just a our lack of focus, too many mistakes on that end of the floor. Watching highlights from the second half down in Athens from this past Friday night. There was about a three-minute stretch there in the second half, Coach. We're down eight, and then three minutes later it goes up to 18, and that's when it really got tough to fight back. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I'm going to try to – my wife would be upset. I don't want to get fined, so I won't give you my true opinion on why that momentum shifted that way entirely. Uh, but, yeah, no, it did. And that was a big juncture in the game. And then, again, give our guys credit. It was 18. And then all of a sudden we fought back, kept fighting all the way to the very yeah. end, man, until the last few seconds uh, when we chose not to foul there, down nine with just a few seconds left. But guys kept battling, as you can see here. And they kept battling, kept swinging, um, which is what we do. You know? So I, 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 that didn't surprise me at all. But, again, this whole thing, I don't mean to be a broken record, but I'm being one intentionally, quite frankly. It, it comes down to us defending. Yeah. It does. I mean, we've got to defend a lot better if we want a different result. Ships lose it down in Athens, 90 to 81. We're going to take a break, come back, and we'll announce our co players of the week and our player on the rise. So don't go away. We're back with more. Ships Weekly, right after this. The difference with Wentz Financial Group is that we do not have a cookie cutter answer to any of our clients' needs. Every day is completely different in the market, and every client situation is unique. We value the opportunity and responsibility to manage the hopes and dreams of our 3,000 customers nationwide. Come see the difference Wentz Financial Group can make for your financial future. Wentz Financial Group, 
Investment management for your lifetime. At the University of Akron, you have opportunity. Opportunity to be transformed through learning in our more than 200 in-demand degree programs. Opportunity to gain lifelong talents in the classroom, the studio, the lab, and in the community. And the opportunity to be a leader because of those who will support you here. At the University of Akron, you'll find your opportunity to reach greater heights. Here, everyone rises. Well, for the second time this year, we've got co-players of the week. Players of the week brought to you by the Wentz Financial Group. And as it's been most of the year, Coach, you're being led by two outstanding players. Xavier Castaneda, we'll talk about him first. Started off the week against Toledo, 23 points, four rebounds. Also had two steals and another rebound. He played 38 and a half minutes. Then he came back against Ohio Friday night with an outstanding shooting night, hitting 10 of 15, including six for 10 and three pointers. He was eight for nine from the line for 34 points. Add in a steal, two rebounds, an assist. Very productive week for Xavier Castaneda. No, he was very efficient offensively, um, and you're right. I mean, he obviously was the Lou Henson um, National Player of the Week a week ago, which is an honor given to, you know, it's basically 31 conferences, Joe. They exclude six of them, so he was the top player in the country out of the remaining 25 conferences that particular week. I mean, what an honor. And then Freeman has been tabbed a top 10 power forward in the country uh, by Hoop Hall. And so those guys are starting to get some individual recognition from team success. Uh, and certainly Enrique is up there in rebounding nationally. Yep. Uh, Castaneda is up there in points per game nationally. Yep. Um, and then, you know, Freeman is a guy double-double wise is also up there nationally. Yep. So those guys have produced at a high level all year. Now, do we need them to be a little bit better defensively, as has been the theme of this show? Yep. Yes, they need to be better defensively. Let's give you the numbers on Enrique Freeman from this past week. Had a double-double both games. 10 points, 12 rebounds against Toledo along with three assists. Came back three days later down at Ohio. 21 points, 12 more rebounds in just over 36 minutes. All these numbers, Coach, after being double-teamed, trapped both games, being bumped, being hit, still comes up with good numbers. Yeah, no question. Um, and it's interesting. I thought one of his worst games he played all year was the Toledo game. And then I pick up the stat sheet, and he has a double-double, you know? So it's like, wow. Um, so he had yeah, no question. He's certainly, he and Castaneda, two of the best players in the country and in our league. Um, and statistically, both of them had a great week. Now, again, I'm going to say it again. Do we need more out of those guys from a defensive mindset, focus? Because uh, our team, your team always follows, generally speaking, the head coach, your, maybe your point guard and your best player or players if it's close. Yeah. Those guys can't have bad days. They have bad days. Everybody else is having a bad day. And so my expectation for these two guys is high, as it should be. And uh, they've got to be better defensively. Um, we've got to be better defensively. i got to continue yeah. to help them more defensively. Got to be a lot better on that end. Our player on the rise this week, a 6'2 senior. <laughs> Trendon Hankerson from Novi, Michigan, has become an offensive threat, mostly coached with outstanding three-point shooting. For the week, he was 50% from behind the line, hitting 9 of 18, 29 points for the week, along with seven rebounds, four assists, plus uh, sat out only eight and a half minutes the entire week. He's on the floor a lot for you. No, you know what, from a conditioning perspective, and I picked this up early on when we were in fall training camp and doing some of our conditioning, the guys like the Energizer Bunny, Joe. I mean, you could, he could go all day. His conditioning level, his cardio level is amazing. So that's part of the reason. And he plays both ends. Like he gives you great effort defensively. He's a really good on-ball defender. And it's been so great to see yeah. him making shots here late. That's what he does yeah. is he makes shots. And uh, for the most part, doesn't turn it over, takes good care of the ball. Uh, again, a lot like the first two guys I just mentioned, for an older guy, we're making too many mistakes defensively and we got to get those things uh, cleaned up, and it really starts with our captains, guys like Hankerson, Castaneda, yeah. and Freeman. Congratulations to our featured players. As we said, the Zips with two more big games this week, Tuesday night at Eastern, and then Saturday night. We hope you're making plans to be at Rhodes Arena as Buffalo comes to town for a 7 o'clock tip-off. We're going to talk about those teams, scouting reports, and more right after this timeout.
The difference with Wentz Financial Group is that we do not have a cookie cutter answer to any of our clients' needs. Every day is completely different in the market and every client situation is unique. We value the opportunity and responsibility to manage the hopes and dreams of our 3,000 customers nationwide. Come see the difference Wentz Financial Group can make for your financial future. Wentz Financial Group, investment management for your lifetime. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. Well, as we said at the top of the show, the Zips with just six regular season games left before we head to Cleveland for the Mid-American Conference Tournament. Two this week, Tuesday night up at Eastern Michigan, then home Saturday against Buffalo. And our scouting report brought to you each week by the Hilton Akron Fairlawn Hotel. So Tuesday night, Coach, we get our second look at Eastern Michigan and Imani Bates. They played Toledo pretty tough the other they night. Have, they have. So, I give Stan credit. It's very clear from watching film here over the last 24 hours that they've improved greatly. Acuff had 32 against yeah. Toledo uh, this past weekend. Uh, Bates had 43 in a game at Toledo. Um, both were, I shouldn't say both, all three guys, Acuff, Farrakhan, and Bates are all averaging in the last five games 24 or more points per game, all three of them. So they put on a clinic offensively. And then defensively, Joe, he's made some changes. Give him credit. I mean, he's really done, changed some pick-and-roll scheme, changed some underneath out-of-bounds schemes, um, you know, changed some offensive schemes with people overplaying, Bates in particular. Yeah. And he's done a really nice job, and they played really well, beating Ohio, yeah. taking Toledo to the wire. You know, they, they, they're much better. It's a completely different game two than game one, and that's what our guys have to understand. Now you mentioned their last four games, Coach. As you mentioned, they played Toledo tough. A one-point loss at Ball State, five points at Buffalo. So they've been playing well, and uh, they are one of about five teams that are battling for that number eight spot in the league. So you're going to get their best shot. Yeah, no, we get everybody's best shot. Yeah, you're you right. see the celebration Ohio players had after beating us on yeah. Friday night, and it was, you know, I'm going to play that clip for our guys. I mean, it's just the way it is. That's a reality. When you have some success, there's a target on your back, and everybody is excited to play you like it's their like it's their Super Bowl. You know, we welcome that and embrace that, or at least we should yeah. that challenge. And then Saturday night, the Zips come back home to take on Buffalo. Second look at the Bulls this year, and up at Buffalo, we played the first time, Coach. I thought you played your best half of the season thus far up at Buffalo. Yeah, without question, the first half, yeah. both O and D, it was great. Right. Uh, but again, game two is different than game one. You got to bring it again. And uh, Buffalo's evolved, and they're getting better as, as the uh, days and weeks go by. And, you know, hopefully we are. I think we are offensively. we got to get recentered defensively. You know, they're one of the best uh, rebounding teams in the league, especially offensive rebounding. They're just a tough blue-collar football team. Or yeah, yeah, basketball yeah. Team. yeah I guess well, you call them football. Sometimes it is like yeah, football on the glass, right. so you're not too far off when you play them. They're so good on the backboard. You're 100% correct. And hopefully have a great crowd that night. As we're winding down here, there's yeah. only so many home games left. You're right. And, um, you know, Zips Nation's been great uh, this year, and we look forward to seeing them on Saturday night at 7 o'clock. Yeah, congratulations to the students. They've really come out and supported this basketball team. We'll see you Saturday night. That's a 7 o'clock tip-off against Buffalo. For head coach John Gross, I'm Joe Dunn. Thanks for watching. Back here next week again. And as always, go Zips. Thanks for watching Zips Weekly with John Gross. Presented by Akron Athletics and the Wentz Financial Group. Have a great rest of your day, and as always, go Zips. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.